Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be taking the second look at OpenSSH. This time, I'm going to be looking at the different key algorithms, some of the other things that are necessary to build up a best practice, SS, open SSH, and so I hope you enjoyed this. Stay tuned right after this. So one of the things that you need to consider when you're first setting up an open SSH uh, is this for your home lab, how many servers do you have, how many users are going to be using it. And the more users and servers you have, the more complex it gets and the more difficult things get to manage. But today, what we're going to concentrate on is how do you know what key algorithms to choose and then how do you know what key links to pick? So that's what we're going to be talking about today. So in Open Secure Shell, the Secure Shell part comes from the combination of hashing symmetric and asymmetric keys to form the encryption that is needed to both to to I guess authorize with the server from the client but then there's also the reverse the server has to authorize the client as well so together all of these algorithms allow you to safely connect a client machine with the server machine and make sure that everything stays nice and secure and encrypted during the course of the transmission but one of the problems that we have with any kind of encryption is Moore's Law. As computing power and computing speed increase over time, yeah, I know a lot of people are saying Moore's Law is dead. Um, it might be, uh, but computers are still getting faster. And the faster those machines become, the more powerful they become, the more things that we see drawn into the processor, like cryptographic and uh, Capabilities allow it to encrypt and decrypt right on the CPU. There's also elements within the GPU itself or the graphics processor that allow you to offload uh, some of the computations that are normally done by cryptographic engines, and that can be used against you. The only way that you can really combat that is to pick a more complicated cryptography algorithm. The other one, and the, the other one is quantum computing. There are algorithms like Shor's algorithm, which was that was developed back in the 90s. But you know, already they knew that quantum computing was going to be a problem for cryptographic computations that are based around math algorithms because quantum can do it so much faster. So, are these are the algorithms we have today? Are they going to be able to be continue to be used to encrypt and decrypt messages? And the answer is no. Is it today? No. We think it'll be about three to five years before that happens. Yes, Shor's algorithm has had some limited success, success with small keys, but there are problems with quantum computing in the current research environment that as you get in more complex uh, cryptographic schemes, the amount of errors that occur in quantum computing build up to the point where things just don't work right. So we think about three to five years before quantum really comes, it becomes an issue. But not to worry, there are a lot of algorithms in development right now that are being built to thwart the quantum computing problem. So uh, yeah, anyway, in 2022, the most widely adopted uh, cryptographic algorithms are RSA, now I'm gonna put DSA in quotes, uh, because it is a member of the latter two protocols, ECDSA and EDDSA. So the probably the thing, I mean, the short answer, if you're looking for that and, you, and that's all you needed to know from this video, I'm going to tell you up front, RSA and EDDSA provide the best security and performance overall for, uh, for a secure shell. So yeah, I mean, it, but there's other things to be concerned about, and so stick around because there's a lot more to learn. So, what cryptographic algorithms and key links should you use, for example? So let's let's find out. Let's let's take a look through all of them here. And the first thing I want to do is I make a pass through this and kind of explain. And I'm not going to get too deep. I'm not going to get into the, all of the math that is surrounding these different algorithms and how they work, because quite frankly, some of them are very complex. RSA 
uses integer factorization, and that was first used in 1978. RSA is based on the held belief that factoring large semi-prime numbers is fairly difficult to do, and it isn't easy to replicate. So the RSA formula is, now this is probably an oversimplification, but the generated number is equal to some large prime factor that's multiplied by another large prime factor. The idea behind it is that we don't know of any general purpose formula that will factor the original two prime numbers, which would then allow us to work backwards to, to get to the, the private key. Now there are issues with RSA on 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 the on smaller uh, security key sizes, and of course we know that that's been a problem, and that's the that is the Moore's law issue, is that if you use a key that is too weak, yeah, you're vulnerable to having someone crack your RSA, and they will get your they'll be able to replicate what happens with your private key and be able to rebuild it. So. Um, I guess the thing to remember here is that, well, even though those tools work on lower, on smaller key values, they don't work so well on higher key values because trying to brute force an RSA formula that is of sufficient length, and it would take millions of years for today's computers to be able to solve. So, The other one is DSA. That's a, that is a logarithmic problem. <clears throat> And the calculation for DSA is very complex. I'm not going to attempt to do that here. I mean, there's a lot of websites that talk about how it works. And I, I would direct you to one of those. But suffice it to say that DSA also creates a public and private key as well. But we'll cover more about it later. There's a lot more to learn about DSA than just simply that. So the, the two us new ones on the, on the block is ECDSA and EDDSA. Those are elliptic curve algorithms they have they do have some math computation that's inside them they do try to solve a discrete log problem similar to what dsa did but these are really offering more complexity but at the same time they offer that co co complexity they also reduce the size of the key so a key generated by ecdsa and eddsa is significantly smaller than than a than a similarly constructed key for RSA. So if you take two of these and you put them at the same security length, then the elliptic curve algorithms are going to be, um, well, let's say that you need a 128-bit security, then the key size will be 256-bit with uh, uh, ECDSA and EDDSA. So whereas RSA, that same key at 128-bit, at 128 bit would be something like 3072 bits long. So it's quite a bit longer key. The longer the key, the longer it takes to encrypt and decrypt messages. Talking about the analysis, now we kind of touched on that a little bit, so I won't spend a whole lot more time on it, but RSA is tried and true. It's been around since 1978. It's gone through a number of iterations. I remember when I first encountered it, and believe it or not, the key size was um, the key length was 56 bits. So, yeah, I mean, don't try that today. <laughs> Your message would be cracked within less than a minute. So, yeah, don't bother with that. Uh, the bad is it generates large keys. And, of course, the ugly we talked about. With weak keys, it can easily be broken. Uh, NIST recommends 128-bit. They actually recommend 112-bit keys right now. But that's only going to last you a couple more years before those become obsolete. Now, that would be a, a key length of 2048. But the 128-bit security will push you to 3,072 bits if you want to do that. That's going to push you out another one, two decades or so uh, before, those become, um, before those become obsolete. So uh, it provided Moore's Law continues on its road. So DSA, uh, the, it was adopted by FIPS way uh, 184 in 1994. Uh, the bad is, is that DSA is only supported in PuTTY today. Uh, and if you're on Linux and you're using OpenSSH, OpenSSH disabled DSA way back in version 7. I think we're on 8 point something right now. So yeah, it's been a while back. They, they just took it out. It's gone. So if you're trying to connect to a Linux box, DSA isn't going to work for you. 
The ugly is DSA requires the use of random generated and unpredictable security values that w once, if you were to discover that, you could generate the private key from it. My recommendation is with DSA, it's obsolete. Don't use it. Uh, uh, ECDSA, uh, it achieves 128-bit uh, security and only requires a 256-bit key length to get there. The bad. That particular algorithm was involved a few years ago on Android phones that were storing a Bitcoin wallet. They, the attackers were able to break the wallet encryption and steal the Bitcoin from within them. Also, Sony PlayStation had an issue using that protocol as well and that it allowed people to uh, gain access to the PlayStation. So, yeah, it... I would not recommend using ECDSA. There is another variant of it, and that's EDDSA. Don't confuse the two. They are not the same thing. They don't even use the same algorithm. So the good, it's not the same as ECDSA. The bad, it's relatively new. I mean, in, in terms of, of lifetime, they worry about algorithms that are new because they haven't had enough track record to expose any weaknesses in the algorithms. That can take literally several decades or more in order to be able to prove them out. So, yeah, I mean, EDDSA has gone through a number of vettings. There haven't been anything found with it, so that's the ugly. There isn't anything known yet, so there's nothing to worry about at, right now. Now, some of the early uh, criticisms of EDDSA were that it what didn't have support in all of the Linux systems, it didn't have binding support in the libraries, but the Crypto++ libraries do include EDDSA algorithms and the curve 25519 has become widely adopted. <clears throat> so Crypto++, and just to show you how, how new it is, just added curve 25519 and some of the other EDDSA algorithms to uh, the, the crypto libraries. That was in the beginning of February of this year. So yeah, it hasn't been a very long time ago. You might also hear it when you're looking in the OpenSSH, um, Etsy SSH directory. You may also see it listed as ED25519. It's the same. So uh, NIST, through uh, on the FIP side of thing, has proposed EDD, excuse me, ED448 uh, in their recent draft of the SP800-186. Uh, but so before you run off and you start generating keys based on what you've learned here so far, there's a lot more to this story than you need than than you're than you're getting here. So one of you know with all the keys and all the security and all of the cryptographic and the key length and everything. Believe it or not, that isn't the big problem with open S with open SSH. The where open SSH gets broken is through inappropriate configuration, misconfiguration. The real question is, where do you manage your keys? And there's there's a number of thoughts about this. And so, what are the conclusions from all this? Well, obviously, RSA, RSA is tried and true encryption. Just be aware of the key length that you're using. You'll need to stay, in, you know, at least up on things enough to know that the security key you're using is still, you know, safe to use. Uh, ED25519, as far as uh, security vetting has, go, has gone, it, the, uh, the level of security that it offers is the same as RSA, uh, but the RSA is going to have a longer... Uh, a longer key generation string than ED25519. So that's the big difference between them. So keep that in mind. Uh, it is new. So, but the real advice here is DSA and ECDSA, don't use them. Uh, and then next time I'll come back and, and we'll talk about open key management. One of the problems you have when you're dealing with large uh, complexes of hosts and large numbers of users is that if you were to try to manage keys on a per host and per user basis, the way OpenSSH is defaulted, you would find that you would have a heck of a time trying to manage all of that. So when you get up into the number of hosts, like uh, let's say 200, 2000, and then number of users, 1000, 10,000, and you're scaling up for that, 
uh, yeah, the, the key management on OpenSSH, if it hadn't been for some of the things that have been added to it uh, within the last five to seven years, it would be a nightmare to try to manage. So that's what I'm going to go over with you on the next video. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please like and subscribe. Let me know what key you, you like to use. Um, there is no right or wrong answer. I mean, I'm not saying if you use ED, uh, DSA, that, you know, that's a bad thing. I'm not saying that at all. Uh, if you use RSA, again, not a bad thing. Uh, it's That's all I had for today. Please like and subscribe. Hope to see you all again real soon, and bye for now.